Santa Maria Cajabón Alta Vera Paz, Guatemala, a town that takes its name from the Cajabón River that runs through it, home to almost 32,000 people. At first glance, it is a peaceful town where men make their living in agriculture and forestry, and women care for their families and run small stores or food and tortilla stands. But behind the beautiful landscapes and kind faces you will encounter in Cajabón, there are painful stories of violence within families. The reality is that throughout Central America and Mexico, women live in a patriarchal, violent, and oppressive system at all socioeconomic levels. Women are educated less, run fewer businesses, own less property, have greater difficulty entering the labor market and have less access to credit and financing than men. Sadly, violence against women is the most commonly reported crime in Guatemala. Out of all the countries in the world, Guatemala has the third highest rate of femicide, that is the homicide of women based only on gender. And according to the UN women, over one in five Guatemalan women has experienced physical or sexual violence from an intimate partner at some point in their lifetime. The number of teenagers aged 10 to 19 giving birth is another indicator of the crisis that girls face. In Guatemala, nearly 68,000 girls, 19 and under, gave birth in 2022. Almost 2,200 of those mothers were between the ages of 10 and 14, which means they were victims of rape, most likely within their own families. In the area of Cajabón Alta Vera Paz, the numbers are especially staggering. 7,900 teenage girls, ages 10 to 19, gave birth last year, the highest numbers in the country. The religious landscape of Guatemala harms more than helps this situation. Catholic and Protestant churches alike often pass on a patriarchal view of what the Bible says about relationships, justifying male dominance and even violence. Women see themselves as inferior and subject to men in all respects. Because of this reality, Sedepka was determined to empower girls in a new way launching the Tamar Project in 2016. The project is named for the biblical daughter of King David, who was raped by her half-brother. Started with a seed grant from Presbyterian women, the Tamar Project uses a series of two-day retreats for teenage girls to teach the theology of being created in God's image and to educate them about their rights. The story of Tamar opens up conversations about taboo topics and participants draw strength knowing that the Bible acknowledges sexual abuse that happens within families. Currently, the project is concentrated in educational centers in Cajabón because of the vulnerability of women there. Sexual y reproductiva. Esto es un proyecto muy importante porque estas adolescentes no tienen otros espacios en donde formarse e informarse de sus derechos, de su derecho a una vida digna, de su derecho a una vida libre de violencia y de su derecho a la educación y salud sexual y reproductiva. As the Tamar project started to impact more and more women, people were rightly asking, what about the men? because women and men are together wrapped up in systemic violence and inequality. Sedepka launched the Jose Project in 2021, a program similar to Tamar, but for boys. The Jose Project consists of a series of retreats for teenage boys based on the character of Joseph, Jesus' earthly father. Growing up in the machista culture of Guatemala, Boys in the Jose Project are offered a theological alternative to the mindset they have grown up with, a different way of looking at themselves at a scripture that redefines masculinity in the light of Christ. Porque invitamos a jóvenes a un proceso de reflexión 
de mirada interior para que puedan tomar conciencia y así puedan cambiar su manera de pensar y su manera de actuar. Boys in the Jose Project learn to name the reality of violence in their own families and are challenged to change the way they live to promote gender equity, mutual respect, and peaceful communities. While some may say that the problem of gender-based violence is too ingrained in society and that change is not possible, facilitators and participants in the Tamar and Jose projects are guided by a different voice, the voice of God who promises that justice will roll down like water and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream.